guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Today we're going to talk about the black darter tetra, Chrysalocerex weitzmanii, which is really unique in a few ways. One of the most interesting being that the males actually guard their eggs until they hatch. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Black darter tetras have a huge distribution from all over South America, but most commonly being exported out of Colombia, Peru, and Brazil. Uh, these are out of Brazil, and generally the Brazil and Colombian, or the Brazilian and Colombian fish are more brightly colored. Now, as you can tell, these guys are lacking an adipose fin, which is kind of unique for a tetra. The males also get really elongated dorsal and caudal fins, and they get extremely beautiful when in breeding dress. Now, all, you'll rarely see these in stores, which is a real shame because once they settle in, they are absolutely outgoing and stunning. The males will spar aggressively which, with each other, so it's important to have a good ratio of males to females with more females than males. Now, they have a reputation for being snarky despite their small size, though I, that has not been my experience. As I mentioned in the intro, what's really, really fascinating about these guys is that they actually guard their eggs. Now, they're cave spawners, so they'll spawn in this aquarium on the undersides of driftwood, and they attach their eggs to the roof of the cave, where the male will guard them until they hatch, usually about mm, four or five days until they are wigglers, and then another two to three days until they're free swimming. At that point, they will actively eat their young, as they are micro-predators, so if you want to have a high yield, you would want to pull them out to raise the babies manually. Now these guys like warm water in general for breeding, though they can accept a range of temperatures from 70 to 82 or 21 to 28 degrees Celsius. They get um, about 40 millimeters or an inch and a half, though I think that's sort of on the large side for this fish. And they do really well with other fish from similar regions, things like pencil fish, small tetras, hatchet fish, dwarf quarries, otocinclus, and the like. They come from slow moving rainforest streams, tributaries, and really densely shaded areas with tons and tons of tangles of wood, sand, and also tons of marginal growth, meaning plants that grow out of the water, which provide a lot of cover for them. So it's best to maintain them in a tank like this one that has a ton of aquarium plants, a ton of driftwood, and a fair amount of tannins. They would probably also really appreciate leaf litter. You can see here there's a, two males and a female. The males are obviously more colorful. The aquarium that I house them in is a 20 long, and it's a perfectly appropriate size. Though you could probably get away with substantially smaller if working with only a pair or a trio. While they do actively engage which, with each other, they're not really schoolers, so it's okay to keep them in fewer numbers. Regardless, I think they are super, super fascinating. If you have the patience to let them settle in and house them properly, they're absolutely an incredible little fish for an advanced hobbyist. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about the black darter tetra. They really are one that I'm very happy to have in my collection, and they're super rewarding. Hopefully I'll get some good breeding activity to be able to show you guys in a future video. As always, make sure you have the notification bell on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, and make sure you stop by my Instagram and my Facebook in order to get additional content. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.